viewers. I'm Caitlin McFarland, co-founder of ATX TV, and this is Jen Morgan, our director of programming. And we make a, a good portion of the ATX TV house and have been assigned a new case, solving the mystery as to how Slow Horses season two is so damn good. You know what? It's funny you should say that. I've got a few leads right here. Um, first of all, got excellent source material uh, with McCarran Slough House novels, which the series is based on. Uh, then you've got a fantastic cast led by Gary Oldman as Jackson Lamb. And not to mention the cold hard fact that spies are cool as hell. The list goes on and on. And I already think you left like two, three, four things off. All right. Well, the investigation is ongoing, but go ahead. Clue me in. Watching Gary Oldman be right about almost everything while also being a farting mess and constantly chowing down. Also, obviously, Graham Yost producing will always be one of my favorite things for those don't know who don't know he's on our advisory board. Mm, Graham Yost. Yeah, I hear that one's trouble. Uh, all good notes to add to a long list of the reasons that people should be watching this show. But all jokes aside, we are big fans of this series. And luckily for us and everyone watching, all episodes of season two are streaming right now on Apple TV+. Plus. In case you need even more reasons to watch, each season is only six episodes long. So if you haven't started yet, you're barely behind. And it's already been picked up for seasons three and four. So, you know, you can invest. <laughs> but today we're chatting only about season two, all of it, including the finale. So consider this your official spoiler warning. If you haven't watched it, pause now, come back when you've completed your assignment. Now, if you have finished the season, get excited because we have some incredible we have two incredible Slough House veterans joining us today, Jack Loden and Rosalind Elazar, who are going to chat with Kate about the chaos, spies, sleeper cells, and everything in between. With that, let's welcome Jack and Rosalind. Hello. Thank you Hello. for joining us. Um, really appreciate it. Before we dig into season two, uh, and even the high-paced nature of that finale, which I did watch last night, um, let's go back to the beginning a little bit for you both about how you got involved with Slow Horses. Had you read the books? How did the scripts come to you? What drew you to the project? Either one. <laughs> uh, no, I hadn't read the books before the scripts. Um, yeah, I read the books whilst we were, once we got the job and, and, and got the scripts to sort of fill in the blanks. Um, yeah, I mean, what drew what drew me to the project? I think that I liked the balance yes. between comedy and and drama, and it kind of didn't feel if it felt like a completely different genre. You know, you can't really put it in the spy genre. It's kind of a thriller. It's probably more of a uh, an office sitcom <laughs> um, set in the spy world. Um, and I just, I, I quite like that the characters weren't immediately likable. They, that, you know, they're all pretty objectionable to be honest and stubborn. Um, and I personally find that far more fun to play than someone that's just sweet. <laughs> um, and you know, it just, it, it kind of centers around a bunch of people that are trying to do their best, but consistently fail. <laughs> it's like watching someone in the street falling over. It's much more interesting than watching someone get from A to B without slipping. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it feels like, that series to me. Yeah. What about you, Jack? Um, yeah, I mean, it, uh, it, it's pretty much what Rose said. I think the... I feel like I've been waiting for something like this for a while. I think the the um, the heavy, heavy cynicism and sarcasm in this, in, in a world that's generally always represented in an incredibly sort of cool but earnest way um, and sort of righteous, um, it was great that this um, ha has that, like Rod says, really sort of workplace kind of cynicism and sort of like you, you don't really get a sense in most things that are set in the world of espionage thrillers that where where like their colleagues annoy them and you know petty little sort of things like that. And I, I just love that in in a in a very sort of usually incredibly sexy world that um, of espionage that it is very sort of <laughs> it's also like a heavy dose of the mundane, which is quite brave. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. The the messiness of everyone is, but you're not incompetent. I know that Jackson's character likes to say that they wouldn't be on my team if they were good at their jobs, but they're not incompetent. They are human. And that's really great to see how the team kind of comes together with that. With getting into season two, you two were both the veterans of Slough House. We had new new cast members join season two. Um, what was it like introducing those members? I, I was thinking through it and Jack, it feels like you were only on the phone with the new people, maybe not even like you were kind of on your own and not it with a lot of that. You had your whole new cast, I guess, in a, in a lot of ways because you were doing your, your solo mission off on your own. And Rosalind, you had the first bit with men and obviously your partner from season one, but in season two, you have a lot of your time with Marcus and as a scene partner. So what was it like kind of shifting from season one and kind of having the group splinter off and, and having new cast members? It's a big question, but. Uh well, I mean, it's nice. It it, it obviously brings a, a new energy, and I think we'll get to see much more of um, Marcus and Shirley in 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 season three. Um, but I mean, for me, it was it was quite weird because obviously Louisa has a a romantic relationship with Min, and uh, Marcus, who's played by Kadif, sort of is assigned to kind of keep a watch over Louisa, which she kind of um, suspects. And she doesn't really like it at all. And it, they they don't get off to the best of starts. Um, but as the series goes on, you realize that, you know, they, they have each other's back, <laughs> basically. Um, but they all, you know, the two new, the two new members each have their own set of problems to deal with. Uh, you know, um, Marcus has a gambling problem, which uh, affects his work. And Shirley has a coke problem, no? Yeah. 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 Um, so, <laughs> you I mean, always like, that like it was a secret. Like, wait, did we tell the people? No, that's, <laughs> that's exactly what I was like. Did we tell? Is that revealed in season two? I don't know that it is. But anyway, Um but they're great, and it's and 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 in season three, those two become partners, um, and Jack and I sort of become partners in in season three. So it's nice to mix and match, and, and you get to work with different actors. Um, yeah, yeah, Jack. What was it like for you doing most of the season, if not all of it? You were kind of on your own without the rest of the the Slough House team. Um. Yeah, uh, I, I was in the Cotswolds um, during a sort of English summer, which was really nice. It's sort of like nowhere you'd rather be, um, but it was it was roasting hot. Um, but it was um, it was great fun, and uh, I was just quite excited for River that he got to go out into the field, um, which is what he's always you know, which is what he feels I think that he's been born for. Um, but it's just sort of just up. It's, there's a road in the UK called the M1 mm -hmm. or the M4, M40. It's just up the M40. Um, so it wasn't exactly sort of like really exotic climbs, but um, it was great. And I, I, but, you, but you do, it is a quite a strange experience shooting this because it's, the shoot is so long each, each season. And when you see the final piece together, it, you know, it looks like we're this sort of group of, of, of colleagues, but, we actually spend so much time as actors apart from each other. And, you know, you cross each other at unit base or in the makeup truck and you're like, well, you've shot what? All oh, right. You've shot all of that. Wow. <laughs> um, it's very like that. Um, but, but like well said, the really cool thing I quite enjoy about this is the sort of um, each season, it feels like we get to act with dif different people and people that, you know, you've always wanted to act with in the, in, in, in the group. So it's, um, it's, it's great. Yeah. It's definitely. Oh, go ahead. Zach's always really wanted to act with me, so he made a, a very <laughs> special request. <laughs> yeah, like, no, I didn't. I fucking did it. <laughs> it, it I, 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 it's because I know I'll look better. <laughs> oh. So, <laughs> Ooh. Well, you know, I may as well be honest. No, no, it's the. Uh, 
it, there, there are there are like certain people in the group that I wish I'd acted with, but uh, they're dead. <laughs> <laughs> or, or keep it acting with, but they they they're brutal on this show with 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 killing people off, and so you, everybody needs to be on their toes when they're watching this, and us as well, because you know we fall in love with acting with certain people, and you read it and you go, oh, they're dead. Mm. Yeah, well, let's talk about that. Min's death in season two is is pretty devastating. Um, what was it like as actors? To, did you read that on the page? Did you get a heads up? Did you know it was coming? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, okay. did, we did definitely knew it was happening. Um, I think we did at one point ask the writers, Are you sure you want to kill yeah. a character like that? Because he's so good, he's so funny. And I think it's a pretty shocking moment for the audience. I don't think anyone would expect, unless you read the books, that you're going to kill off that sort of character. Um, I mean, I'm still hoping that he'll come back as like he has a twin or something in its set. In, <laughs> 2080 or something um but yeah it was it's it's just really sad but also in a way it's quite it's quite good it's quite real you know I like when series kill off an important character you know in the second episode <laughs> it's not even like it's at the end it's it's yeah you know. you just you just you just kind of hope that the audience aren't going oh, I wish they'd killed that guy <laughs> yeah yeah, and- yeah. Because because Ros and I are still in it, we hope that they're like, thank God they didn't kill them, and they're not sat there going, "I wish they killed them." <laughs> I know? don't, yeah, I don't think that one is is up for grabs. Uh, I, I was sad to see him go, and it was shocking in episode two. And Louisa, uh, then your character specifically has to shoulder the loss. You're devastated. He was also your partner, um, and then you go straight into action. I don't know if we would call it fully avenging his death, but you become a cold very focused person how was it juggling kind of those different sides of Louisa and and going hard for really avenging his murder um that's a good question uh I think one thing I like about the way it was done is that in other series if someone dies you get a lot of space afterwards for uh, a character to grieve and you see them having these massive breakdowns and da 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 da. And actually this one, I think is probably more aligned with real life in the sense that you do throw yourself into things when you lose someone. Um, And grief can kind of hit you when you least expect it and you know the whole series takes place over I think like two or three days and as she says she doesn't want to just sit at home and think about it she just wants to get straight back in she wants to get straight back into work but it it it, yeah it was it was quite difficult to strike the balance between making sure that we still think she's grieving for someone (laughs) (laughs) and it just being there under the surface. But at the end of the day, she's got a job to do and she doesn't believe that he, um, God, now I've suddenly forgotten what the story is. (laughs) She doesn't believe that he was uh, killed by an accident. Yeah. It wasn't an accident. She knows that for sure. And seeing her leave the funeral, but go straight. I mean, it is a a really balanced. I think they did a good job of making sure you knew she was still grieving. And and in the finale, you do get a little bit of a moment of everyone coming together to cheers. Yeah. Maybe it's not what everyone expected, but. Did you notice that it was his favorite song that was played in season one? Mm -hmm. I did. I thought it was great. (laughs) <laughs> well, as we sort of wrap up and get on to the social questions, I do want to say, uh, obviously, we talked a little bit about like getting to act with different people um, and Gary Oldman being sort of the li- not be sort of being Jackson Lamb in the series. And he has shared that he is considered retiring after this series. Is that something you believe? <laughs> is that something that weighs on anybody as like this could be Gary Oldman's last show, last acting is that a part of any conversations that you guys have? Any feelings? I, no, I didn't know about that until <laughs> some, someone said that he'd said that in an interview or something. But, I mean, it's probably testament to how long we're hoping to go with this. 
for how long Gary yeah. and people are hoping to go with this, that it, it, it might go and go and never end. Um, and it will, and he'll be forced to retire because there's a lot, <laughs> well, there's a lot of there, books. There's a lot of relax. I would imagine he enjoys that he can let himself go and kind of be a mess. And it seems like a very fun character to go out on if we're being yeah. honest. He's definitely earned this kind of character. And, yeah. it, you know, you kind of hope, I hope that we earn that one day. Um, where where he can just basically sit on his arse behind a desk oh, with his feet yeah. on the table and just well, swag everybody off. Well, we want to say congratulations. It must be such a relief, just as an actor, as a work, as a working actor, to know that you've got three and four, hopefully more, but that to have that breathing room and not be year to year, that is such a a joy and a privilege. And as a viewer, it makes us want to invest more. So we didn't really talk about the finale and I don't think we have time. We have to have people go watch it, but it is a wild ride. Both of you are on opposite sides doing completely different things from planes and bombs and helicopters and shootouts. And it is so much fun to watch. So congratulations. I, I can't wait to honestly rewatch it. It's awesome. Thank you.